Hello. You probably saw a little bit ago that I made a game. This game to be exact. And in this video, I'm just going to sort of, you know, tell you how I made it, the development process, uh, stuff like that. So if you haven't played it, well, uh, what are you waiting for, man? It's free. Just download it in the description right now. It's literally free. Anyway. Essentially, this game is your classic Five Nights at Freddy's, survive till 6am type of deal. Except, the twist is, you get to make sort of a, a plan of how you're gonna set up traps, use different items, and you know, there's like a bazillion different strategies you can use, right? There's a bunch of different ways to beat it, based on your personal preference. And I got this idea around Christmas time, Christmas Day to be exact. I was sitting there, watching Home Alone, chilling, right? And it was around this time that I was trying to think of an idea for my next game, right? And at the start of the film, I was sort of thinking, you know, this this might make a pretty good game. But I couldn't really think of a way to translate it into game format. So I kind of just forgot about it and kept watching as usual. Until this point in the movie right here. You see where he pulls out this plan. As soon as I saw that, instantly I was like, boom light bulb i had all the ideas just come to me it was like magic right so the day after 26th boxing day i immediately rushed to start making the game but uh hang on wait what engine am i gonna use i mean i've been using unity for a while now my last game was in unity but uh then they did that whole thing yeah, you know what I'm talking about. And you know what? I'm not going to let Unity just walk all over me and then go crawling back because, oh, learning a new engine is it's too hard. No, not me, all right? I'm switching for real. I'm switching back to the original engine that I used to use a year ago. Godot, my beloved. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry I cheated on you. I should have known. I should have known you'd never wrong me. You'd never betray me. You're loyal. You're not like that bitch Unity. Could you maybe forgive me? Uh, and we could start over? Yeah, fucking of course we can. You're, you're a game engine. It's not like you have feelings. You're not my damn girlfriend. You're a computer software. This whole joke was so dumb. Why did I put this into the script? Let's just get on with it. And so yeah, I started working on the prototype for this game, alright? You know the drill, ugly grey boxes, no sound effects, just pure gameplay. You know, testing if the gameplay is actually fun. But uh, I came up to a problem pretty quick. This was a pretty hard idea to prototype quickly like you normally would. You know, normally you have like one idea and then you iterate on it and then you build the whole game around that, right? Well, it doesn't really work for this game, because this game's got a load of mechanics. There's like a bazillion of them. And then you've got to be able to block them, and then they've got to all, you know, fit together nicely. And then what, what are the different mechanics even going to be? I mean, uh, what about actually making it balanced? And, you know, there's just, there's a lot of moving parts, all right? Let's just say that. So I ended up spending, like, two to three weeks just making this really simple prototype uh, and I still wasn't a hundred percent sure that it was actually like you know good and I know I know I shouldn't commit to making a game until I've got a solid prototype or whatever right but then I realized you know I'm not committing years to this project just like a couple months and this is a learning experience anyway right I ain't selling nothing I'm not spending nothing. There's no real expectations of quality. It's just for my personal learning, really. So since I'd already spent two or three weeks coming up with all these ideas, making this prototype and everything like that, I don't really want that time to be wasted. I actually want to make a video eventually. So I was like, you know what? Screw it. Let's just do it. And so I started making the graphics for the game. And I actually had sort of a goal in mind with these graphics, right? I wanted to come up with an art style that I can pretty much just stick with and then make all my future games, you know, in the same art style. Because, uh, 
I'm not really that good of an artist. So I thought if I stuck with one style, you know, really perfected that style, well then I could make good looking games in less time without spending like a bazillion years practicing a bunch of different techniques and stuff. Because realistically, I don't have time to be trying out new art styles and learning anatomy and different techniques and, and whatever else, right? I got all this other stuff that I need to worry about. I'm not a 3D modeling specialist and I don't really want to be. So, you know, I just want my games to look good or at least, you know, good enough. So what I was going for is something I can produce quickly, something that doesn't take a whole lot of skill, something that looks pretty decent, but is also somewhat unique. You know, I don't want to make the 10 millionth low poly game, all right? Eventually, I landed on this. It's pretty simple meshes with very little texture besides these like lines on them, these little black lines. And then I added a shader that gives everything a thick black outline. I think it looks pretty good. Doesn't take too much time to make and it looks pretty unique. So once I got the art style down, I modeled a bunch of stuff like the house, uh, the decorations in the house, uh, stuff like that. Just getting all the environment sorted. And then once I had that done, I started modeling the monster. Now, I'm going to be pretty honest, I know the monster design is uh, pretty boring, but listen, alright, I couldn't think of anything that good, and that wasn't really the point of this game anyway, alright? It's just a monster that breaks into your house, alright? The monster is not the main selling point, so uh, shut up, alright? This ain't no mascot horror game, what do you want from me? God. Anyway. With the monster done, I started making all the graphics and sound effects and animations for each separate mechanic. And I just realised, I haven't actually told you about the mechanics yet, have I? So, uh, I guess I'll give you a quick rundown right now. First game mechanic is the windows. You basically gotta use your torch, see if he's out there in the dark, and if he is, shoot him before he gets inside. The garage door starts slowly opening at random points in the night, and you've got to close it before it's fully open. Then there's the fireplace, you have to keep the fire lit, and if it goes out, you can't relight it, and obviously, the creature can get in via the chimney. The back garden fence, uh, you've got to use this little step stool, you know, drag it around, and then you can use it to see over each side of the fence. And obviously, if he's there, you shoot at him. The front door, uh, basically you can look through the little peephole, and if he's there, you can just shoot him straight through the door. Then there's the power, the power basically goes out at random points in the night, and you've got to switch it back on. And then the power obviously affects some of the different traps and the lights in the house. And then, there's like a phase two, uh, towards the end of the night you've got to go upstairs, where a new mechanic is introduced, which is the vents. They slowly unscrew themselves as the monster attacks them, and then you gotta screw them back in before they can come completely undone. And the next one is the tiredness. Uh, staying up all night, obviously, you're gonna get pretty tired. So as the night goes on, your vision will get blurrier and blurrier, and you'll get random auditory hallucinations. Now the last mechanic, and uh, my personal favourite, is actually not a bad one. It's actually something to help the player out. The last one is, uh, you get to have a dog. The dog can basically follow you around and you can place him wherever you want. And if you place him near like a dangerous area like a window or the door, he can bark to warn you that the monster's obviously attacking in that room. That way, you don't even have to check that area at all and you can just go there when you hear him barking. Phew, alright, uh, I think that's all of them. As you can tell, that is way too much stuff to do everything at once, right? And that's sort of the point, because that's where the blackboard comes in, right? Basically here, you get to plan your defenses, block off certain mechanics, use different upgrades, you know, all depending on your preferences. So each player who plays the game will, in theory, have a different experience, and there's a bunch of equally viable ways to beat the game. Or at least, you know, that's the idea. I don't know exactly how it will turn out because I'm recording this script before the game is released and uh, nobody but me has ever tested or played this game. But anyway, right, that's the idea, hopefully it works, and uh, that's just about everything covered gameplay-wise. 
What else have I got to cover? Uh, let me look here. Oh, yeah. The story. Right. Um, so, you're probably wondering. Who are you playing as? Why is this monster breaking into your house? And what the hell is going on? All right. Well, there was a story. Keyword there being was. I kind of scrapped the story because... As the idea for the game kind of changed and evolved, the story just became kind of irrelevant. The original story is that, you know, you'd wake up one morning uh, and everyone would be gone. You know, it's like the Twilight Zone, right? Some some rapture type shit going on. But then you weren't alone, right? Because there's these monsters that come out at night, right? And then there'd be five nights, each with a different monster, different mechanics, stuff like that. But, there'd also be this, like, scavenging section between nights where you could go out, search for items and supplies and stuff like that, and then use them during the nights. But, the problem with that is that it would take way too long to make five nights plus a whole scavenging system. You know, this game's complicated enough as it is, alright? That is way out of scale for this project, so as I slowly started to, you know, shrink the game down during development to a more reasonable scope, the story now just doesn't work anymore, because there's only one night and no scavenging. So yeah, I basically just binned the story completely, because it doesn't make sense anymore, and does anyone, does anyone really care, huh? Does anyone really care anyway? Exactly, right? No. No, they don't. There's a monster breaking in your house, and now you got to protect yourself. Boom. Simple. That's all the story we need. Right, so, I think that was a pretty good overview of the game, and, you know, like, the development process of the game. But, I reckon you never really get it until you, you know, see it for yourself. So play the damn thing already. It's it's free on itch.io. Download it, alright? Do it, quick. In the description. Right now, ah, actually, hang on, ah, 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 you gotta subscribe first, alright, done that, alright, now you can go, off you go then.